Industries that are hot, sectors set to outperform the market. That's what's here in Zach's industry rank analysis. What industry is set to outperform this week? Well, let's ask Charles Roplet, who's our senior market analyst for Zax.com, who puts this report together for us. Actually, you're taking a look at uh, an industry I don't think we've done together here before. You might have in your writing, but I don't think we have here. It's the uh, investment management industry, more in particular, mutual funds. What's going on? You're talking about higher profit expectations for mutual fund managers. Is that necessarily going to translate into actual dollars? It will, and it's interesting because over the last week, we've seen several analysts raise their profit forecast on many mutual fund companies. Uh, in fact, this has actually happened really within the last seven or eight days. Uh, if we throw Invesco in the mix, maybe two weeks. And it was interesting because I did see it show up on my radar yesterday, Tuesday. And when I saw it, the question was, it wasn't so surprising that I saw estimates going up because if the S&P 500 has rallied, by about 40% since early March, then all the fund managers should make more money. And just for people watching it to understand this, asset managers and money managers in general generally work off of a fee, meaning that say they have a billion dollars in assets, they'll usually get about 1%, the fee varies, but about a percentage of that in profits. Now, the larger the portfolio is, the more money the fund managers make, smaller portfolio is, the less money the fund managers make. Right. Um, in this case, we had a huge rally in the S&P 500. And so when you see that, it's obviously pretty clear, okay, if the index is rising, then the assets are really the size of the portfolio should be rising if everything stays equal. Obviously, it's in the real world, nothing stays quite equal. You do have inflows and outflows. I was going to ask you about that. Obviously, you're talking about money coming into these funds. Right. But how does that balance off with the money that's still going out? Well, it's interesting. We're actually seeing money coming in. And really, for April and May, it was a very strong month in terms of inflows. Uh, Strategic Insights said that both April and May were $50 billion-plus months for the funds, meaning that each month they got $50 billion worth in capital. So they saw the value of the portfolios rise just because the markets rose, but they also saw inflows coming in. So all that's pretty good. Um, but like I said, it was kind of known that the markets are going up, so there should have been some sense as to that, some sense that earnings estimates for the second quarter were probably too low and they needed to be revised upwards. So it raised the question, why now? Um, asked several people around within the industry, people who cover the industry, um, and, and the general consensus was, well, the market's up, <laughs> which was, of course, well, thanks for answering my question. Mm -hmm. uh, but so you do have that bit of obviousness. But I think the other thing is that we did see some funds come out recently and actually say what their assets under management were for May. And I think that was the catalyst. I do think some analysts were waiting to actually see the numbers from the money management firms themselves as confirmation so they felt confident to raise their estimates. So in the past three months since the market's been going up, have outflows subsided to a sufficient point where they're no longer a big issue here? Well, I think certainly when you look at April and May's numbers, definitely it, they have definitely improved. You're seeing people put money back into the market. Um, this said, there's still a lot of people sitting on the sidelines, a lot of institutional money still sitting on the sidelines. Uh, I think some individual investors might be a little bit cautious too, but we are seeing inflows coming back. Um, and that kind of goes along with a broader trend that we've been seeing of a reduced level of fear. We can see that in the Chicago Volatility Index. Um, even though yesterday it did rise slightly above 30, it's really far down from where it is. And so I think we're seeing more people being comfortable with the current market environment. Is there still fear? Is there still concern? Absolutely. But I do think people in general are feeling more confident now than they did before, particularly about what the future holds. How do you think the curtailment of company matching funds into 401ks is going to impact these funds? Well, I think it's definitely a drag in there. We're still seeing inflows, but certainly uh, if companies are cutting back what they're matching, that's definitely going to hurt. Um, you can certainly factor in uh, job losses as well. All those are negatives, but we are, but again, we're talking relative to expectations. And right now we're actually seeing pro profit estimates. And really, I think even now with the current revisions, that estimates are probably too low. So, I mean, we're not looking at where we were two years ago, where we're in a bull market, everybody was happy, everybody was, well, most people were employed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think relative to where we were three or four months ago, 
a definite improvement, and that's leading to better earnings expectations. Um, and obviously, when you see earnings estimates being revised upwards, that increases expectations for the stock price, which means you know greater, greater, uh, well, really higher share prices for investors. So there's definitely potential for more upside in these stock prices from where they're at right now. And you talk about M&A activity playing a role in this scenario as well. Yeah, absolutely, and I we it's pretty timely I'm mentioning this because BlackRock actually and Barclays just agreed to uh, finalize the deal on the Barclays investment business. For people watching this, they really know this more by the iShares business, which was considered the crown jewel of Barclays. Um, I do talk about mergers and how you should actually view them in the industry in the piece, but I will say that uh, iShares is really crown jewel of the entire ETF industry. It will make BlackRock the number one money management firm in the country by a pretty wide margin. Uh, this deal should probably close. The date I saw this morning was fourth quarter. I think I saw month of December, but sometime in the fourth quarter. So it hasn't happened yet, but that's a pretty big deal. Um, not sure what it means for iShares going forward in terms of changes for that. Um, people who have owned funds in iShares on the iShares family may want to just keep an eye on it. Uh, but my guess of anything, you might see uh, BlackRock maybe try to expand the iShares business versus changing it uh, because from all outside appearances, it does seem like it's a very well-run business and definitely uh, a business worth having uh, by a bigger competitor. So and it should be interesting to see what happens to BlackRock in the years ahead, being that they're now this mammoth size in the money management industry. All right. Uh, you mentioned a couple of funds. Do you have own shares or have money in those funds? Uh, Possibly my 401k. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I would say yes. I probably own funds in one of, one or more of those fund families. All right, in the interest of full disclosure. <laughs> and this morning that Charles refers to is the morning of the 17th of June, the day that we tape this interview here. Read all about what's going on with money fund managers on Zacks.com. When you scroll down that page and click on the headline, which is under the industry rank analysis banner. And that's the piece that Charles has written about, and that's what we were discussing here with him today. With Charles Roteblatt, I'm Terry Ruffalo.